Hello, uh, this is Daniel Gleitz from ED Films. I'm the creative and technical director here. Um, after a little bit of an unintentional hiatus, we missed a couple of stream days, and so I'm back. I'm back here uh, to finally stream again. So we've missed a few things, had a bunch of technological problems, and we're late tonight. So I'm sorry for that. I appreciate your patience. Um, anyways, we're back. We'll put in a couple of good hours here. Thanks for everyone who's um, putting up with the inconsistent schedule at the moment. That's obviously going to be cha going to change, and we're going to get back on top of things. Um, but I guess, but what are we doing? Um, last time we worked on, I believe it feels like a, it feels like a lifetime ago. We worked on some rocks that we did um, in in Rebel, and we were doing some paintings and. These are going to be for a scene using our character or animated rig character that we have um, that I was going to put together. So I also have been working on a whole bunch of little brushes, things like that. So part of some of those brushes I was working on was for the Patreon stream. And um, and also some of them are, or not Patreon stream, the Patreon. And some of them are for the this guy right here, this scene here. So I thought I could kind of kill two birds with one stone and get some of these, get some new brushes set up, stuff that we can give give away and some of the stuff that we're, we've are we been looking at selling. So we've been adding some brushes, as some of you may know, um, to the to our storefront, our, our very much work in progress storefront. We've been adding some brushes there. So, um, this, some of these, so I've been adding some more. I've been trying to get some more stuff. So I actually went out and shot a whole bunch of photographs and started bringing in some things from the forest and the area around here. Um, so I'm, I'll just go into really quick. I went out with my son and we went and I went out with a big white piece of Bristol board and photographed a whole bunch of things along the train tracks and out out and about. So just trying to get some really cool plants that we can use for some brushes. So I've collected a whole bunch of them. Um, not all of them are great. Some aren't entirely usable. Some are really neat. I'm kind of interested in to see if I can actually make some brushes out of these things. It's a pretty basic process, but I thought I wasn't sure if that would be interesting to anyone is going through the process of making brushes. I was painting a whole bunch of custom brushes. So what I have been working on is not only that, but I was painting, I've been creating a whole bunch of little brushes using a really interesting process with Rebel and mixing it with stuff that I'm actually making in Photoshop. So I thought I'd go through that process really quick. Uh, some of this stuff, uh, whoops, um, some of the stuff we just are going to be on our Patreon brush giveaway this week. So I've been taking photographs, so I found some pictures and I've been converting them to like watercolory washi type things just to get away from like super photographic looking brushes. Um, I'm trying to do stuff that's a little more hand painted. So this I just painted a whole bunch of pine cones and then I've got a whole bunch of clovers and they work to varying levels of success. Some not super well, some of them need tweaking. These are very large right now, but these are like little patches of clover. Oops, I got a little thing I gotta fix here. Let's get rid of these floating dark spots. And these are just taken from photographs and then I just push them really hard, but they've made for some okay stuff. So for, I'll just go here really quick for our, um, I'll just show you the ones that I've made so far. Oops. I want to go here for here and then we'll go to, just bear with me for one second because I just want to pull up thing. These are the Patreon brushes for October. So some of the brushes, these are the brushes that I made from those. So you can use them like that. Oh, hey, Spinnerita. Thanks for hanging out. I'm sorry for being in MIA for, for the last several days. I'm excited about the pine cones too. I know they're a bit ridiculous. I thought what might be cool, what, I've, what I'm trying to do right now is focus on some smaller scale stuff. Um, I started with these those little those little micro plants, the th ones that little appear on moss. Because I was trying to think of you know really close things that we can have if the camera is really close to stuff, 
and I'm thinking like little spider webs, um, moss, like this whole stuff. So these little bits of moss, and then these little little tiny little plants. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spinrita, the text. My computer's fixed. It's all I fixed it as of yesterday night. It's all back together. So the machine's fixed. The graphics cards have been uh, taken out and reseated. Everything's uh, drivers are all updated. So everything's good on that end of things. And um, this evening, M M's been M's out of town deal with, with doing some with some family stuff, and so I had a, a bit of a hard time getting away because I have to go. I have to stream from the studio, so I have some uh, friends watching. Watching my son is hanging out at our house tonight, so I was able to slip away, so that I could do a stream. So thanks for your patience, guys. It's been a little bit of a, a one thing after the other around here. So I'm glad to be back. I'm excited, and welcome everyone who's here. And how are you doing, Pachelovic? 1205. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being patient. Um, anyways, so what I thought we'd do, I don't know if this is interesting, but I thought I'd make a few brushes and just show, kind of show you the process for making some of these because I want to get, I want to diversify a little bit. So I have, as you know, I have a whole bunch of brushes here, a lot of which I've made, but also some, a lot of them are fairly old. And some of them are from the Aaron Blaze brushes, like these ones here. So one of the thing I found with his brushes that I would like to improve upon is, let's go here, and um, they're they're really great, but they're also they're they're kind of there's a limitation to them. Like there is for any brush, there's always a limitation. So and there tends to be a very specific look that emerges from them. So I wanted to try to expand on that. And there's some cool things he did with some of his grasses and his branches, as you can, they're like double-sided. Let me just find one. So I was going to do one of that. I've done one before with grass. And I think it was in one of our brush kits, or grass kit, or brush grass one that we did, where the brush goes two ways. And this is similar to this one. This is an Aaron Blaze brush, not mine. You go like this, and you can go up. You can go back, like up and down on it. And I think this one's another one you can go up and down with. So I just create some, it creates some like cool little, cool little textures. Um, oh, thanks, Spinrita. Yeah, the, so those plants, you're going to, you're going to get those brushes that, I don't know if you're talking about these ones. Um, you're going to get those brushes from the Patreon, the Patreon thing. I made those this, just over the last couple of days. They're a little bit, um, they're a bit tricky to, to, to manage at first to, to get, a look that because I'm really like I said I'm trying to focus on close-up stuff so I made these brushes I've been working on these ones so I have a lot of stuff on the go like I think some of you guys have seen these ones I didn't put these ones in the patreon yet because they're not quite they're not quite ready yet um, let me just turn off the, the clover here so I've got these ones I'll just grab them make sure I'm on a layer that I can muddle about on Yeah, I think all brushes have learning curve. You're right. You have to learn how to use them because they're br the problem with like I guess it's I don't know if it's a problem, but the characteristic of digital art is stampiness. Like everything has a kind of a repetition to it. So trying to work out that stampiness and get rid of it is really tricky. So these are the brushes I'm working on right now. Um, these are the moss ones, which I showed a little bit. But these ones you can create really micro moss things or like really cool plants with. Now I didn't put these ones in the Patreon one because I'm still trying to figure them all out. And I wanted to I wanted to wait until I'd finished that scene with the robot to release all the brushes that I'm using for that scene. Um, but anyways, the thing about digital brushes is they tend to be repetitive. So the idea is, is that you can have enough variety that you can use a whole bunch of of the same brush to different brushes to achieve one plant, for instance. And that's why I really like the Pascal Blade brushes. Um, or what? Not Pascal Blaze. Sorry, uh, Aaron Blaze brushes. But the thing that they're they're limited. You only have so much you can work with. So I was doing the same thing. But what I wanted to do is like, let's say we have these plants, for instance. Um, if I were to lay out a whole bunch of them, like you really have to be careful how you use it. If you just go back and forth, it looks pretty terrible. So the idea is like you get a certain amount. Of, like I'm stroking up on this, but then I can go in here. And add a couple little a little custom ones, but again, uh, like you have to be careful of where and how how you use this because it will start to look patterny. Like you see, if it's it it'll, can look mirrored, it can look repeated, 
And it takes a very fine-tuned brush not to do that, which is why I haven't released these ones yet. So then I have another one, which is sort of a single one that I can go through and just like pop on little extensions here and there. So, you, so the idea is to sort of work with them all together to get something that's less tiled, right? Especially when you're dealing with bigger things. It's a little different, for instance, if we're using one of the, the Aaron Blaze brushes. Like let's say you're using one of these brushes. If you just if you're gonna go like this and create a whole bunch of little um, pretty big detail like these detaily things, they work fine. Like you, you're not seeing the repetition too bad because everything's quite small. So one of the things I wanted to play with is like what if the what if it's the repetition isn't small? Oh, this is like a really good pine brush. And weirdly enough, this is hand painted, but it doesn't look hand painted. But it was. This is one that uh, I'm excited to get out there too. Um, anyways, so the idea is like with bigger details, how do you get a how do you get them to not look so repetitive? Oh yeah, um, Spun Rita, not all tablets support tilt. Mm. And the one way, so some of these brushes that you're going to get um, from the from the Patreon, they are tilt a bit. There's a bit of tilt to them. Um, I think it's here. Some of the, and I bet not all of them. So because I know that sometimes people don't have tilt. And let's say, for instance, what was that one that I was using that had tilt enabled? Right here. So it also depends on your pen, right? So what kind of tablet are you using? Because if you're using, um, like if you're using a tablet, most most of the tablets don't support tilt. But it could also be dependent on the Intuos pen that you're using, because not all the pens support it. Like sometimes you have to get a more expensive pen. Like I got a pen that can the art pen. Okay, so you're on it. Yeah, I got an art pen which will support different amounts of tilt. But you can double check in your settings too. Like if you go into, I believe, like I'll just pull it up right here. There's a new update. I'm not going to do this update because it'll shut everything down. But you can you can check with your um, actual pen, and you can you should be able to see somewhere if it will support tilt. I don't actually see that here at all. Oh yeah, tilt sensitivity. So I've got mine set to normal. And the art pen, the the art pen supports rotation. So you can actually twirl the br brush around. So you can have tilt and you can have rotation, like turn the brush. And I use that for some of the rocks, like th where I could actually twist, turn the brush around without tilting it. But if you don't have that function, I wish you could do this. I wish you could actually have a hotkey linked to the tilt of the brush. So that would be really, really cool. Because right now, um, the, the, it'd be cool if you could go plus or minus or like hit some button that rotated the brush. That'd be amazing. I don't know how to do that, but um, anyways. Um, so it, the brushes that we put out, that I just put out, like the Clover ones, um, these ones, again, you do have to, you do have to kind of get familiar with how to use them because depending on what direction you go, like it's going to create slightly different patterns. This one tends to work really good in this direction, but you can always go in on the brush and go to the brush tip and then just flip it. And it will give you a different a different result, or flip it on the Y and go like that. So if it's turning upside down like that, and you don't like it, go like that, and you just flip it on the Y. So you just just flip, fix it that way. It really just depends on how you're working. Uh, Spunnery is not on sale. You're getting it. You're getting it in the the Clover one is coming with the Patreon brushes. So I have there's three clothes. So the brushes you're getting, I actually put more than I think um, Roxanne's putting them up. I put a these ones up so i'll just show you really quick i made kind of i have seven brushes instead of just five um because they're a little bit weird they're they're a little bit tricky to work with a bit you have to use them sort of sparingly like it's really good if you had a painting and you just want to put a dash in here and there and get these like these patterns so i made one that's like really the full pattern and then i went in and i did a dual brush and that kind of decimates the pattern a little bit and gets rid of it makes it look a little more painterly. So I have these, I have a couple of the same brushes, but I've gone in and I've, I've added a dual brush to them. So they look a little more, a little less repetitive. Um, and this is the Ivy. So with the Ivy, the Ivy is like a pretty good one. Right now, like the flow is all the way up and stuff, but um, th I think this one's doubled up too. I just wanna see all the ones we have. So we have this one, and this one kind of works in both directions. You can really just, and you have to, it's a little tricky. Like they're, they're not, 
they're not the easiest brushes to use. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing is they're they're kind of like detail makers. So you can you know just pop one in there and then grab an eraser and clear some of the stuff out. You know that's the the point of them is to just add little things here and there. Otherwise, they'll look very they could look a little bit repetitive. But you know I did make them so that if you press lighter, they get thinner so that you can. So the roundness is the roundness is thinned out. So that what that does is that gives you the ability to make them look like th these are farther away ones. And then as you push down, they get they get thicker and bigger. So you can kind of create hills a little bit with with them. And I still haven't mastered them. Obviously, they probably will need tweaking. And if I do update them, you guys, I'll send you the updates, of course, because I'm sometimes find the more I work with a brush, the more I'll be like, oh, this needs to be like this, and I, maybe I should try this. So. I'm still working on them. This one makes some like cool little structures, but the the goal, the point of these brushes is to sort of mix them all together. So, if you take, oh, and I oh I didn't give you guys a moss brush yet. That's my little moss brush, but you'll have that one soon enough. So the point of these is like if these if this was sort of like a close detail, you would then go in and you could add in some little planty things. So if these were let's just we'll just colorize this for now. I'm not doing really good color painting at the moment. I'm just trying to like, I'm making the ugliest, ugliest thing ever made right now. But let's say you had had this thing and let me just grab, I also, I want to put this brush up for free and I'm just trying to, I want to figure out where I can put it, but I have this brush, which I use for everything. And I'm going to put it up for free because first off, I use it for everything. And secondly, I got it from a teacher at a concept art class course. So he shared it with the whole class, and I just figured, you know what, I should probably just put it up for free so people can use it. Um, but I use this for a lot of stuff. It's a pretty fast brush. I'm probably going to murder these off. But let's say, let's just do this really quick. Cool. Oh, thanks, uh, Spunnery. I'm just reading your comment now. Thank you. I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you're excited to try them. I was a little nervous about them because they're not as refined, and I haven't put them all through their paces as much as I usually like to. So, if you're having problems with them, again, they're also quite big. Like they're thousand, they're about a thousand pixels. I made them a bit smaller because the originals are two thousand. So I made them smaller so that they can they won't slow anybody's system down too badly, but just let me know if you're if you're struggling with them at all. Um something else I wanted to ask is like, do you guys want tool presets? I made some for these ones, but it was on the other computer. But if you want tool presets, I'm more than happy to give tool presets too or as well. Let's just put this all up. So let's just make that's too bright, but so the idea is like if you had something, um, this isn't perf like I perfect or anything. This is going to be pretty terrible because, like I said, I haven't really sorted these out yet. Let's say I want this to be a bit brighter. Let's just put in a little thing here, and then I'll just erase them off a little bit. But then the point of these is then you go in and let's say you have these little flowery ones, and those would be like little white flowers. Okay, Spinnerita, cool. Okay. Just you let me know if you have any troubles at all, and I'll make sure that we get them sorted out. Oh, why isn't this? Oh, because I'm in eraser mode. You can use these as erasers too, which is also fantastic. That's one of the other things I wanted to, to do is like if I take this, so I have these little clovers. If I create an eraser, so right now this is an eraser mode, I could use like let's say... I don't know, I can use anything for an eraser, and I could erase off little bits. And that also, if I'm using a cool little plant eraser, it can help me to find some extra detail and cool things. I haven't given, you guys don't have this brush yet, but this is my clover brush. It's pretty versatile. I'm still working on it, but this one's pretty good for like little tiny details. I think I've showed it up uh, before. But anyways, the point of this is that you take, so like we had that, like I was just showing you, and then we have these little flowery ones. Um, I put them to like little white flowers or something, and or they could be little pink flowers or whatever. It doesn't usually look as good if I pop them in as pink because need to, you need to tweak them a little bit. But I can create these little flower dashes here and there. 
And like I said, it's a tad finicky. The lighter you press these ones, the flatter they go. So if you do really hard, they're going to be big and forward. And then if you put them light. But anyway, so then you can click on this thing. And let's just grab, we'll just grab like a regular brush. And then I can start, you know, putting them to more white. Getting a little bit of green in them. So they're not all so uniform. You can get a couple little orange ones in there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I like tool sets too, and I've been using them more and more. So I'll, I'll happily provide them. I do agree they can be a little bit annoying. Just put this on. Cool. So you can see, I mean, these are this is not nice looking specifically, but you can take what I've provided you and you can start doing a lot with them. Right, like this one, I think I have, oh, I forgot to put on the, whoops, my bad. I forgot to enable this. So I can come in here and just put a little more color because they're going to look a little bit bad or flat. That's inevitable. Let's put some... And then you can even go so far as like if you want to, which is usually I do too, I do this anyway, is I might come in and actually start drawing on some of them just to add some extra detail here and there if I if I really want it. Like if I want to just like actually drop in and put some extra little colors and stuff in there. And then what is the other one? Cool, Spunnerita, I'm super I'm super happy you're excited. That's awesome. Because I'm kind of excited about them too. I'm excited to play with them. Well, that's my. Oh, this is my. I also have the strawberry leaves, which I've shown you guys. But this is pretty good for, from what I've played with so far, it's pretty good for like little undergrowthy things or just general texture. It's like little, like, like little leafy texture, and this can be stacked up. You got to be careful because things can get pretty busy. So you want to make sure you're managing your masses okay. These are kind of detail adders. You've got to be careful about getting too noisy with them. So small, they look pretty random. But when you start getting bigger, you start getting, you get more of your leaf patterns in them. So they can be a little hectic, a little chaotic, but they might, they might be great for texture. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't taken them through the, all their paces yet. But they're really good. They're definitely good for little accents here and there to really push things around a bit. Um, so that's the ivy leaves, which we've already talked about. And then these ones are sort of more my kind of disrupted ones. Anyways, um, play with them and let me know if you, if you're having trouble with them or they're not, they're not working very well. We can always, we'll figure them out. So, um, but these ones are a little bit more, they're, they're a bit of an experiment and they definitely require a deft touch. So let's just shut these off. We'll get rid of this. So the next um, the next bit of brushes I was going to do is just get some of these guys taken care of. I've already done a whole bunch of, let's just turn those off. Oh yeah, I gave you one other one, which is like little clovers. Um, oops, I didn't mean to close that one. Sorry, I don't, I accidentally tr didn't, dem didn't talk about that one. So there's all like these ones, but I'm missing one here. I think it's this one, no. I've got little clover leaves. Oh, there they are. These are little um, little clover leaves. So they're usually kind of a pinkish color. But these are like little clover flowers. I know they're a little bit hard to tell, but they they they're just little little splashes of of flowery things here and there. And the f softer you go, the more flat they are. Anyways, they can work pretty good once you've combined them all together. Um, but again, it's a little touchy. I think I mean, they can get pretty big. I've tried to keep them a bit painterly, so they're kind of loose. They're not photoreal. It's easy enough to make photoreal ones. You just take stuff like this and turn it into brushes. So we'll we'll demo some of these right away here. So one of a couple of these ones I wanted to make was some double sided ones. Now these are pretty big. This canvas here is 5,000 by 5,000. It's ginormous. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be teasing. I'm just, I'm excited about them. I'm excited about for you to be able to play with them. So what I'm going to do with this is what my thought was, was to take this and double-side it so that we can have a double-sided brush. 
Now you'll see there's a bit of a white fringe around it, but what I've done for all of these is I've gone in and I've cleared out, um, deleted the background off them. So it wouldn't have to be white, like it could be anything, but you can see that white fringe and that's because stuff is slightly out of focus. Um, and I didn't go as far to clean that all away because it's actually going to not be visible when we clean the brush for, well, clean the object for making it into a brush. So let me just undo this really quick and I'm going to duplicate these guys. So these will be, this will be where I do my brush. I can't do my brush palette in here. I'm actually making my brushes in here, which are, let me just check my image size. It's 1500. It's a little bit large. I should probably keep it. Let's just go make a new comp for brushes and I'll probably make that. I'll, I'm going to do a thousand by a thousand, which in some ways is small, but also it is heavy for other people. So we'll, we'll put our brushes in there. Let's put this over here. So let's take these two cutouts and we'll just pull them over. Drop them in. And you'll see they're ginormous. Okay. And let's put that back up there. Okay, cool. So I've I've only really tweaked the alpha channel. So if I press if I press shift on some of these and and put them back, you'll see that everything kind of everything will come back. You'll get a lot more stuff showing in. But I was pretty good on the whiteboard trying to get stuff pretty flat and even without shadows. Okay, so for this one, it'd be pretty small. So there's going to be there's going to be two versions for this brush for 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 these brushes. I want one that's solo or a combo, right? Like I this thing. The problem with this brush is this this big guy here will look very repetitive that big thing right there. So we may have to delete that, clear that off. I'm not 100% sure. But there's certain characteristics that in brushes um, become very patterny looking. So you have to remove them. So I'm deleting it off the alpha channel. I'm not deleting it out of the actual photo because I want to be careful not to wreck the brush or make it so I can't undo something I've, I've done. I'm going to delete this off. That object has the potential to look a little bit repetitive. Okay, so we have a few ways we can approach this. Like I was saying is I do want to do one that's kind of doubled up, but I also want to have the capacity to do more complex clusterings of plants, which we'll do. So this is going to take having quite a few different takes on this. This is going to be a huge brush library when this is done, but I'll show you the process at least. So the first thing to do is we'll desaturate it. We don't need any of them to have color because they're all going to be turned into brushes, which are just one color, obviously, and shapes. I was thinking of turning them into shapes as well. Um, and let's just duplicate these ones and we'll just hide these ones away. Let's just start with one. So this is pretty good, but um, usually you want to get your contrast relatively high really depends. So if I wanted to make an alpha brush, so a brush like this would be for around the edges. We would use a brush that's like really stark black and white. That would go around edges of a mat, right? We might use it for a mat along. Well, we'll, we'll use this one as a mat to start. I feel like my rescaling is by cubic. Is it automatic? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's fine. This is, it feels a little pixelated, but I guess stuff kind of looks that way because I have such a high resolution monitor. We'll see um, if I, yeah, cause I'm kind of zoomed in. If I go to hundred percent, it's quite small on this monitor cause this is a 4k monitor. Uh, yeah, I used control U and then I can just, or no, what did I? Oh yeah, I did control shift U. Control shift U is to desaturate. Okay. So let's do this one too. We'll turn this into a silhouette. So control. Um, and I'm just going to press Control M, and Control M is for my my brightness and contrast. Now you can do the curve, or you can flatten things out like this, which can be a little bit sometimes too aggressive. If you really want to make just an alpha channel, you do that. That's just purely flat. So um, then there's no real nuance in it. It's just really it can, the more you go like this, the more flat it's going to solid it's going to get. So I try not to do that too harsh. I'd like a little bit of stuff in it, even if it is for a matte an outside mat. And then I'm going to just delete off. I see a couple little specks here and there. I'm just going to delete them. And again, I'm deleting them out of the thumb, out of the opacity. I might get rid of this little hangy down thing here. 
there. Cool. And I'll probably get rid of these little grassy bits too. Because we want to just, I think the focus will be to, I'm going to have a whole bunch of little grassy. I have so much of this stuff. I'm really excited to turn these into brushes because I've, I've always been looking for brushes like this and they're really hard to find. At least I find they are. Maybe they're not so much for you guys. Um, so I'm going to select my brush and I'm just going to go to my kind of everything brush. And I've got a white selected. So we've moved into another language of keyboard. So I'm just, again, I'm erasing off the thing. So I'm just adding a little bit of a fade on the bottom for now. And there's something else you can do, which is sometimes cool, is if you want to put like little spots and stuff, you can kind of do that kind of thing here if you want to add some extra detail um, to get it away from looking so photographic. Um, like I have some cool spatter brushes from, um, from Kyle T. Webster. So sometimes you can go through and just add like little extra details here and there to make it look a little looser. Um, but I'm not doing that right now. For now, we because we want to make a double brush and we want to make a pretty a couple little strong just silhouette brushes. Um, anyway, so let's just clear this one out. I'm just going to use my lasso tool. I don't really care too much about it being perfect. Because ultimately it's pretty small. I think we'll keep. We'll, maybe we'll keep this chunk and see what happens. It may not. It may not work. Whoops. Other way. Bonk. And I'll get the brush and just pull this off. Oops. Wrong brush. Actually, that's a really slow brush. Actually. I don't know. It might not be a good idea to have that thing because it could be too patterny making. So let's actually just clean this thing right up. Get rid of all that stuff. There. Oh, wrong way. Delete, brush, invert. Okay. I might end up having to paint that stem back in. So this this would be like an alpha brush that we could use. So let me just, I'll define this one really quick and we'll just have a look at it. Um, so we go edit. So if you have a black and white composition, now correct you, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure, but I've been, fi I've been finding no matter how big my composition, if I just have a black and white thing, um, I used to I used to have to select it and go edit define brush, but I feel like if I just go edit and then I say, um, oh, you got to make sure the layer is selected. Not if I go define brush preset, it seems to scale it quite well just based on its actual black, the black value. Like it seems to cut it out really well. So now I've got a brush already. So let's go over here, or maybe we'll go to the, let's go to this little scene right here. Just Give me one second. Okay, we'll go to this one because this is this is where we're going to be using all this stuff anyway. Okay. So now we can start playing in here. Now this one's meant to be a bit of a silhouette brush. Um, mind you, things in this scene aren't super painterly. The silhouettes certainly aren't painterly. Um, let's just make a new layer and we'll select a dark, nice dark color and we'll put shift zero, make everything at 100%. So, so far, cool. It's a brush. It's a, it's a nice little plant silhouette. It's probably like over detailed, really. It's quite realistic. So that's something we can fix later. I've got, I've got a strategy for that and I'll show you that in a moment. But for now, let's just take our brush presets and first off, increase the spacing. Um... Oh yeah, the other thing, just quickly. Um, <clears throat> this brush is sort of tilted. Where are we? There we are. That brush is a bit tilted. We may not actually want that. I'm finding that's probably going to be a bit of a problem right off the bat. So we should probably straighten this brush out a little bit, more like that. It's gonna make it a bit easier to work with and you'll see why in a second. So let's define this brush. Okay, that's a new one. I don't bother naming them at first because they're going to be renamed anyway. Because you'll see right away we're going to be changing that brush and making a new one. So let's go back to the scene. Bonk. There we go. So first things first, let's get the spacing up because we don't want these things so jam-packed together. This is more. This would be more of an individual thing you threw here and there. 
And with that in mind, um, probably want to put a p possible angle jitter being a tilt. So I would use either rotation or pen tilt. I don't think I can use rotation. If I use pen tilt, the comfortable position actually automatically puts that, that brush on its side. So then you have to go into the brush tip and then just turn it upright, like turn it this way until it's upright by default. Like if my brush is parallel to the, sur or adjacent to the surface, I need to turn it sideways for it to stay upright. And now what I can do is I can kind of tilt it back and forth. <coughs> We may change this. So the next thing we want to do is obviously add a bit of a size jitter, jitter. And I'm going to take off the tilt thing for now. We'll just turn it off for now. Because it's going to make it too too tricky to work with at the moment for you guys to see. There we go. Next thing is let's put on some flip X, which you'll see if we run it along a string, it'll make it look a little less patterny. The nice thing about this one is we can extend it up quite a bit. It makes for like a cool, a possible cool tree because it'll flip for us every now and then. And if we don't like the way it's facing, we can just do a stroke and undo until it flips the way you want. So that can make a cool plant right there. And then we can paint that in and do other things to it. Um, right, so then let's add some Let's add some pen pressure for diameter. Now, you don't necessarily want it to go to the most infinitesimally small thing, so that's when you start playing with the minimum di diameter. Because Sometimes if you have to press super hard every time, it's not really that helpful. But if I want to make a nice small one, I want to press nice and soft, they'll give me a small one, and I'll do a big one. As you can see, you start getting some variety in there. So the tilt would be nice on this one, especially if I'm going to work this way. If I'm going to stack, like build a brush like this, then it's a great way to work because I can I can change some of the angles. So if we put tilt back on, pen tilt, and then I'll just I know it's kind of annoying, but I gotta do it like that. So if I put one here, and then maybe I want to do a side one that's kind of coming like that. It's a little bit hard to wrangle it, but we'll get it. There we go. That one's facing too much the same way, so let's undo that and then. We'll go. It's a bit hard to tell how big it's going to be, but this is how you make really complex, unique brushes. So, and I'm using only one brush, right? So I, I know it's a little bit clinical at the moment, but it'll come around. I'll I'll get it sorted. So there we go. So now we have like a kind of a little tree, and so what we could do is build a whole new brush out of this thing. Although I like I can start. I am starting to see the patterning there, but it's something you can add to once you have a few different brushes on the go. You can start stacking it all together. So the idea here is to build up the base, right? And then we kind of then we kind of work from it work on it from there. But I'm gonna put this back to this way and then we'll put on turn tilt off. I'm getting an error message on my tablet right now because it needs to be updated. Okay, so the next thing to do is the roundness jitter. Now roundness affects the brush on the on the side like let me just explain this. It took me a while to figure this out. Is if your brush is uh, oriented up and down, roundness is going to squish it up and down, right? So if you want your roundness, this like, and this is important, if you want your roundness to affect the height of a tree, a plant, for instance. So like, let's say I put our roundness uh, effect on. So if I do it lightly, the plant is flat, and then if I do it heavier, the plant is more vertical. If I want it to effectively squeeze the plant and make it more narrow, which which maybe what I maybe I want that feeling more. Then I have to go in and I have to take this brush and I have to turn it sideways. So if I turn it sideways, do this and then go edit. To find brush preset. Oh, I got to be careful though because I haven't saved any of my work here. So I'll just make this new brush for a second, um, just so we can keep where we're at. So I'm going to go um, edit, define brush preset. So now we'll have a sideways one. I think we can go here and we can go to the brush. I think we can just change the tip. Sometimes I find it really hard to find the tip, but is that the right one? Yeah, okay. So let's go to set one. So there you go. We should have the same thing, but we for this, now what we want to do is we take our brush tip. We'll have to change a couple things. We'll orient it up, and we're gonna get, going to get rid of this flip X, and we're going to do a flip Y. And our spacing will have to be different because the brush is horizontal. So 
Anyway, so we've got this now, but roundness will now affect the thickness of it, right? So if I push hard, or let's say I have roundness jitter on it, let's, uh, let's just put that up nice and high, and let's say roundness jitter's on, and let's take off pen pressure control. It will just change the, the thickness of it. So you just have to decide what, what you actually want to happen. It really depends on the on the effect you're going for. So for this one, I'm going to go keep working the way we were. Okay, I'll close that off. And because I'm fine with the roundness jitter being the height. Okay, and then, then we got to work on spacing and stuff. You can do a bit of angle jitter. I find angle jitter risky for plants because plants don't go at all angles. They, they tend to try to orient themselves um, up from the ground. They don't tend to be sideways unless that's the type of plant. So that's this is just like the one brush, and we're getting some interesting stuff that's pretty usable. I wish Photoshop did what like TV Paint does. Um, TV Paint, you can have multiple brush tips that it will cycle through, which is amazing. For stuff like this, you could have, you could make like ten brushes, and it would cycle through all these different br similar brushes, which is just incredible because you could do forests so fast with them. And it makes for some really cool visuals. Um, and you can do animated brushes too in TV Paint. So that's a pretty cool brush. So what I, I'll show you next is, let's say we had we had that brush. We're generally happy with it. Um, we can turn this off. I learned this 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 technique. I'm about to show you. I learned in a video tutorial from from years ago. Yeah, it's like animated GIFs in a brush. It's really, really cool. Um, that's why one of the reasons I bought TV Paint was because because of that exact thing. Um, because you could have, you could paint these brushes that we're, lit, l that we're working with right now. You could import those. And I could do, I could do animated versions or I could do 10 of them and have it cycling through all my different tips so I could make really cool forest patterns super fast. In Photoshop, I'm gonna have to switch out a bunch of brushes because it's going to get patterny really quick. Okay, so what I wanted to do is just go like this really quick. Let's build a really quick brush, a new brush. So let's say we have this one and we're, we're, we're pretty happy with it. Let's say it's like, it's okay. Um, now there's a difference for me, if I'm going to make a brush that's meant to be kind of a painting brush, I will usually have some transfer dynamics on it so that I can go softer and get heavier. It really depends on the look you're going for. Um, the, it is not, these transfer dynamics are not necessarily good for painting mats for sure. And they can kind of be self-defeating. It's a little bit, it's, it's a fine balance. So Usually I just turn it off and then I'll turn it on if I need it. Depends on the brush. For brushes like this, they're kind of silhouette brushes, so I would just leave them like this. Um, but anyways, let's make a, so we have this, we've we've done a brush already, so we did this one. But now we want to do a version two. So let's, let's just save this brush preset. And we'll call it like dry plant A. There's gonna be so many of these things. So now what we're going to do is we'll take one here. I'm going to put the tilt back on. I mean, we don't have to do the tilt. We could just we could just do it ourselves. Just do pen tilt, and then I'm just going to do that thing again. Sorry, guys. I know it's like it seems feels a little redundant, but you'll see. It's because I'm showing stuff. I could just not. Also, I'm going to turn off size being pen pressure because I want to just I'm making a brush, so I don't want to have dynamic sizing. I want to do it myself. Okay. I really want to make sure I avoid anything that starts to feel um, too symmetrical. So really be careful. Like if I do something like this, you're going to see the copy right away. So that's something I have to really be conscious of and try to avoid. Okay, and let's say if I do do this, for instance, I'll just erase this side off right here. Let me just get a better eraser. Okay, 
So I can go in and let's shift zero zero. Let's make this real hard eraser. So let's turn off um, tra transfer mode so it's nice and hard. So for this one, I'm going to just tweak the brush a little bit. I guess I could have just used the lasso tool. Let's fix that. Get rid of that little piece there. Cool. I could add little pieces if I want to as well. This is fine. I could just put this to 30% and just kind of clear off the bottom a bit. Try not to have hard squared edges at the bottom. Okay, cool. So I'm just looking for anything that looks a little too patterny. Usually it's hard to tell until you really start using it. Okay, so that's kind of a cool brush. Um, if I wanted to add some diversity to it, I could, like like I said before, we could paint on top of it. Just using white, you don't have to destroy the actual brush. You could use uh, a different brush and, and put a texture on top of it. But I think overall that's pretty good. I might go one more. I've just done a new layer. I might do one more little thing like that. I'm not sure. It's getting a bit too thick. Let's just do a couple little, little ones. There. You can be pretty precise with these. Pretty precise is that. Sounds a little silly. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to change a little bit on this end here. Just make it so that the ends are a bit different on some of them so we don't see too much of the tiling. Cool. The main thing is these ends. You just want to watch the end pieces. They're the they're the dead giveaways. So if we make this one more of like a bulb instead of like a with the two little frilly things, and maybe put this one to one of these and cut this down a little bit. Each one of these little modifications will just add a little bit more variety to the brush so it won't be so transparently repetitive. Cool. Just want to watch for those two droopy leaves and seeing that combination too many times. Cool. Okay, so now we've got a new brush. So we can take this, edit, define brush preset, bonk. Now we have a new Twiggy brush, and we just we used one brush to make this, so that's kind of cool. Um, this is definitely a more elaborate brush, and I stupidly applied it to the eraser. We'll just go here and grab a new one. There it is. And now you can get crazy and start making even more brushes out of it if you want to. I think I think what we could do is I'm just going to take this, and maybe I think I can I should be able to duplicate. Can I duplicate a brush? I can't remember. I find the the brushes can be a little bit, I find them a little bit tricky to manage sometimes. So let's say we have this brush. Can I duplicate it? I don't think so. Maybe if I press Alt? Nope, that cuts it. Control. No, okay, I'm not going to mess around with it. Anyways, we'll just make a new brush. So um, I moved that one by accident, but now we have this very elaborate brush, and unfortunately, we have to go through the process. I guess this is why we pay the big dollars for brushes. So shape dynamics, pen pressure, vary it quite a bit. Minimum diameter, bring that up a little bit. Tiny bit of angle jitter, maybe. Roundness jitter, for sure. Flip X, for sure. So now we can, even with this, we can create a pretty crazy bush. Yeah, I don't feel guilty, Spinner. I have so many brushes, it's ridiculous. In fact, when I do this, when I try to scroll through them, my whole computer slows down. For, it's a little, it's faster right now because I've been in this mode for a bit, but yeah, don't worry about it. I have so many. So now we just have to decide what we're doing with this. Like This could very easily become a little bush. The problem I'm seeing, I am seeing a problem with this brush, is once I got, I'll have a lot of them going on, I'm seeing this little brushy thing, th that little leafy thing repeating a lot. Um, could be a flaw of the brush, but it could also just be it's not a good brush for going like this with. So it go, works well like that. Like if I kind of pull it and then get bigger, that's a cool tree. So let's see if maybe I give it a little bit. Let's take the shape dynamics and we'll put the angle to um, direction. 
So this will mess the brush up because it'll go sideways at first because I want to pull downwards. So I'm just going to rotate the brush like that. And so now if I pull downwards, I should get an upward sort of tree thing. So now we got some kind of a cool trees happening. Oh, that's, yeah, Spunnerita, that's probably because it's so slow. It's just like, mm, you grabbed the wrong brush, and it's just because it can't keep up with itself. Cool, this brush is pretty rad. Pretty happy with it. I could increase the spacing a bit more if we want it to be a little less. Uh, you can see how you can get so many different results. Oh, now I can make cool little pine trees if I put it go the other way. Yeah, so now right now I'm pulling downwards and that gives me the brush. I could flip it and just pull it, do it the other way. So if I pull upwards now, I get, so I grow it up from the ground instead of from the sky. It's really up to you. It's easy to fix. Switch. That's pretty nice. That works pretty good. That's a lot of, it's a lot of detail. You do a lot of stuff with that. Okay, so that's one brush. One brush down. I mean, and then obviously you can add texture and do all kinds of crazy. Stuff. I try to keep. I try to really keep that stuff to a minimum because it tends to slow the brush down a lot. As soon as you start adding texture and stuff, things can get really hairy. Um, even, even um, what is it? Uh, dual brushes can be really, really heavy too. So you can, I mean, this is pretty good. I, I'm not going to do trans, I'm not going to do transfer on it because, again, that's something I usually do on my own. So this will be a matte brush. That's the other thing I'm doing is the brushes are going to be, I have to, It's. it adds a lot of extra work, but I usually make a matte brush and I make a, a painterly brush. So it can be a, real, a little bit annoying, especially because you can't copy and paste brushes and just like, you know, you can change the tip easy enough, but it's just a bit of a pain that way. Um, anyways, something just has to be done. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good. That's a good brush. So now let's create the double one. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so let's get rid of that, and we'll just save this preset. Um, we'll call it like that. I don't even know what the other one was called. We'll call it like Twiggy B. What was this one called? Let's rename it. I think I can rename it. Yeah, we'll call it Twiggy A. So this one, again, we can use this one independently on its own, which will be refreshing and, and kind of what we want. Um, and then this one, we'll be able to build a pull to make more complex structures. We need to be careful though, because you see how if, if we go like this, I mean, if we go, if we turn it a bit at too much of an angle too soon, we'll get a break in that and you'll see parts of the tree hanging down. So we just have to be careful with that. Actually, we may want to change that and increase the spacing. Let me just see if I, if I increase the spacing, it should reduce the amount of possible overlapping I'm getting. So the brush will chain better. I'm just not sure what that spacing has to be. I feel like it worked better when it was really tight. Though I am seeing a lot of tiling. It's not so bad if you kind of get in there and throw some like horizontal strokes in there. So you do your one and then you like, you just you could size it down and maybe put some little fuzzy strokes in there. Well, I think it works pretty good. We'll leave it like that, a little bit of a furrier brush. I feel like when the spacing starts getting a bit far apart, it breaks the brush a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, the brush doesn't work that well like that. It needs to be kind of packed. Cool. Okay, we'll save this one. We will call brush preset.
There. All right, let's get rid of that. Cool. Um, okay, so that's another brush. Good. Now the next, let's do the one, the double one we were talking about earlier. So we have this one we did. That's only one brush. Isn't that crazy? We only dealt with one thing. We haven't even touched this thing. So this needs to be its own thing. I guess since we've already kind of gone through the process, it'll be a little bit faster. But that's so many. I have so many brushes I have to make. It's crazy. I could spend days doing this stuff. No, no. Go ahead, Spinrita. Ask away. This this stream is, is your stream, so... There's not even that many. It's pretty quiet, so no pressure. Ask whatever you need. Hmm. This eraser is kind of annoying because it has transfer on it. So we'll make that nice and hard. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make this one. Now, this one may have a problem because of that thing. That thing, as cool as it is, it might actually end up being a bit of a curse because it sticks out so high. So it may end up creating quite a tiling problem like or make it really clear that it's repetitive. In fact, I'm positive that one's going to be a problem. So we could either delete it or we could, um, could delete it or we could just move it might take this end piece off here. Let's go, let's just go right down to the leaf on this one. Oops. Might zoom in on this. I just want to get this a little bit better defined. There we go. Okay. That doesn't feel so junky. Okay, cool. So this is our next one. This is a fairly, I guess it's kind of a little brush, but let's just define this one. Edit. Define brush. There you go. Oh, and of course I did it on the eraser again. But that's okay. We'll just press B and then select this one. There it is. It looks horrible. So once again, if anybody knows how to, to copy presets from another brush, that would be amazing. I don't know how to do that. Mm -mm -mm. Let's just change some of these settings. I'll pick this color so we have some good reference. Let's increase our spacing. Let's go brush shape dynamics. We want to put... Maybe I'll do pen pressure on the roundness, but not too much. Flip X jitter for sure. Roundness jitter for sure. It gives us some variety. Size jitter, definitely. Um, pen pressure we can have on that, but we'll keep the minimum up a little bit. So you can see this one runs a risk of being kind of tiley because it's got such a distinct top on it. So I think we're going to have to stack this one up before we can actually use it. It needs something in the middle to break up that structure. So you, if you look at it, you can see that there's a very identifiable shape there, that triangle. So we have to get in there and either break that up somehow or, you know, or it's just not a good brush. So that one there, we need to get rid of that. So something we can do there is we can take the part that we cut out. Well, we cut out this thing, but I don't think I deleted it properly. I think I deleted it off this thing, stupidly enough. So let me just go here. I'm going to add a new layer. I'll grab a this one. And I'll just fill this in black. I'm going to take this piece. I just painted a new one because I accidentally deleted it off the thing. And I'm going to use that to break up this little shape here. it 
right to black. Okay. Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, okay, so you paint yourself in Rebel, cut them out, grab the paths from Photoshop, put them in a viable, uh, redefine the pivot. Okay, so symmetry, first off, symmetry only works if the, well, it, it works if the objects aren't perfectly symmetrical. But what you can define is you should be able to define symmetry by, you can say define symmetry by component or by, by edge or something like that. So if you go into edge mode and you set the symmetry and you set it to, um, just try it and let me know if it works. Don't pick object or world. There should be one other one and you can manually define it. Um, the alternative is, it should. I don't think it has anything to do with where you've put your, 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 um, where you put your, what's it called, your origin. But I'm not 100% sure. W w was, the object, was the object mirrored initially in the first place? Check for that option. I know that option exists in the modeling toolkit. I'm not sure if it exists in the sculpting part of it. But that's, that, that'd be one to check for sure. Okay, so let's, let's try. Let me know, um, Spunrita, if that works. It, okay, it wasn't initially. So that can happen because if it's not mirrored or symmetrical to begin with, um, it doesn't recognize where the symmetry should be. Because you have to have exactly the same number of faces, or ver not exactly, but the, you typically you want exactly the same number of vertices as on one side as the other, and they, are ne they need to be kind of lined up for the mirroring to work. But you, you can you can force it. I know you can force it by saying, at least in the modeling toolkit, you can force it. All right, let's just define this brush preset. See how this one looks. I think that one's going to be better already. It's going to be a little bit harder to see the repetition in this one, I think. Let's do all this stuff again. Size jitter, roundness jitter, pen pressure. That one's pretty good already. Cool, this looks like almost like pine trees. Okay, well you should be able to force it. I think there's a way to force it. There may be something in the model, the the edit settings of the model to force, force symmetry as well. Let me know what you find, I'm curious. Okay, so with the flip on it works pretty good too. These make some pretty good little pine trees actually. Yes. That's nice. Looks pine tree-ish. Okay, and then I'm just going to put on, probably do the same thing again, pen direction. Oh, not pressure. Direction, and we'll just rotate this to the side. So we can, this one actually works two ways, which is sort of cool. I think, yeah, topology, that's exactly it. That's the one you're looking for, precisely. And topology, if you do topology, you should be able to select an edge or something, and that will force symmetry. Cool. Oh, no problem. I'm glad that worked. Awesome. That makes me happy. <laughs> I'm happy that it worked for you. That's great. Cool. Okay. So we have a new brush now. We have this one. This one's pretty sweet too. It's a nice little plant detail here. Nice variety in there. 
pretty cool. He makes pretty nuts bushes really fast here. Okay, so that's two brushes we made. Why don't you get on a roll? Well, I've been, I have to say I've been working on these brushes for quite a while. The spacing on this one's okay. I have to be careful. Like again, always a learning curve to a brush. Like really careful how we how it ends up tiling, but we can do some pretty nice stuff here. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Winter's coming. I might just rename these guys after because I feel like naming them just makes my life a little crazy. Okay, let's delete it and we'll delete this brush. We'll delete this brush. We'll delete this brush. Okay, so now I want to make the one that's doubled really quick. I mean, I could I could make another complex tree out of this one. I'm just not going to do that for now, though. Like, let's, if you guys want to do that stuff, you can do it. But I want to do a double brush now. So let's have, kind of let's try to keep it simple, I guess. Because it has to be small. So let's, uh, maybe we'll duplicate, um, well, let's leave them like that. Let's go this one and this one. You know, those are the same. Those are the same. Yeah, yeah, that's my bigger one. Okay. We'll take this one. No, that's not the one I want. Sorry. Brain's not working. Merge that. Duplicate this one. Turn this one off. I'm just keeping backups just in case. Not that we super need them. So I'll rotate this one 180. We should probably just do another brush, in all honesty. Just because the... Um, We've got this one already. It's almost like we don't need another brush to make this one work. But I just want to show, like, I guess I, I kind of want to just show what you can do, which is probably already apparent to you guys. But if you have a brush that's, like, stacked up and there's two of them. And actually, this brush would probably work better oops, if the top piece on this one was a little more pointy and less signature looking so let's just i'm going to apply the layer mask on this and i'm just going to break this little thing here and we'll straighten it out because i think it'll be too identifiable with this y shape so I'm pressing Control Shift J and breaking that off. It's giving it. I'm gonna give it a little more straight up and down, and I'll probably break one more thing off. I just want to be careful. Actually, I might do this one too. I'll break them all. This little point here. And just, I might actually, yeah, for this one, this will be a little weird at first, but I'll control shift J, that one, oh, wrong one, control shift J. So I'm very manually manhandling this brush into something that I feel like is going to work a bit better as a vertical structure because I feel like um, if it has too much of a Y shape to it, it's not going to be as useful. I definitely find that's one of the things that kills a brush is if it has like a really, a Y every time it flips it, it it doesn't mirror well and because the mirroring is very obvious or it can be a bit aggressive let's just narrow this off a bit so i'm basically rebuilding this brush aggressively and manually let's, we'll see how it works put this back behind here and i want to erase the stem off both of these we go and then let's get rid of the stem on this one there we go cool so now this can be kind of our double brush I'm not sure this one I might have to I might have to bring this one in a bit um, let's merge these two together just to keep life simple or make it more complicated in a few seconds I just want to think I think I want to prune this trim this a little bit just in this area Maybe make this thing a little less out. There you go. And then just delete that off. I'm being a bit aggressive here, but 
I really want to avoid um, a brush that doesn't tile well. It's not looking super good. I need to fix this. Oops. It's too, I can already see too much patterning right there. This one is not, that one part's not working super well. Maybe I'm just going to cut off the end piece here. Like that. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, let's try it like that. A really aggressive pruning. <laughs> let's get rid of this piece. Cool. Okay, so now let's take that and we'll define this brush. So let's define preset. I'm trying to do brushes a little bit every day. I was doing like, um, I had a bit of an Instagram thing going for a bit, but it's like as much as I want to do like a little sketch every day and stuff, I felt like it was way more productive to do stuff like this, unfortunately. Fortunately and unfortunately, I'm not like, it's not horrible. It's just, okay. So for this one, actually I won't do a flip Y. I'm going to do a flip X and the way it's going to work is I'll take the shape dynamics and I'll put the angle jitter to direction and I'm going to orient it. You thought you killed your last time you filmed, but <laughs> Wow, that's amazing! Yeah, these brushes are going to flower like crazy. They're going to—they're going to change everything. They're going to turn into—they're going to turn into ginormous trees. I won't have to do anything. They're going to be—they're going to be wild. Do size jitter on this and a roundness jitter, so we get some pushing up and down. So you see very quickly. Oh, well, aside from that sideways one that showed up, I can really start building up based on the direction I'm going. It can really start building up some brushes. Now, you may not want to do it like this. Like I have this based on direction, which you could also do initial direction, which is better in some ways because you're not going to get, you're not going to get flipping, which sometimes happens if you go back and forth. So if you go like this, although I don't love how I'm. Okay, never mind initial direction. It's not working for me. There, so you can see really quickly, um, I can really fill this up really quick with one brush. And especially if this, like, think of it this way. Well, actually, let's go into the scene here. We're not going to see anything under here, so if I go like this and I go, like, stick them together like that, I can quickly build up a bit of variety without having to have a whole bunch of extra brushes. So that's why, well, I'm getting too many of these. So then once you get the hang of your direction, you're going to, there you go. We made a little forest bush. Okay, so that brush is pretty sweet. Um, brush projection, I use sometimes, but I'm not as into it. It's better if you're doing like really inky, sumi, sumi ink kind of things. Um, roundness jitter, let's put that up a little bit. I don't know where that went. Cool. Minimum diameter is pretty small. That's interesting. Do you think with my minimum diameter being zero? Oh, right. I didn't put pen pressure, right? There. So let's put minimum back up to 50. Or we can put it low. Let's see. Yeah, and then just be scale the brush up a lot. And they can do like really little ones. Oh, hey, uh, UX Frank. I don't know if it's UX or UX. <laughs> Tell me what you're, you just let me know. First time commenting. Thanks for, thanks for saying it's amazing and not that it's horrible. <laughs> uh, 
that would be a little disappointing. But I'm okay with it. Cool. So that gives us a pretty cool brush, a pretty cool tree. I think that's a handy brush. I want to do a lot of these. Like it's definitely one of my goals to get a lot of these. The only problem with these ones, not the problem, but the limitation of these is, of course, your size. You're not going to be able to make the brushes like a 1,000 brush. Like our some of our other ones are going to have a little bit more detail, so they'll hold up to the camera being pretty close. Um, versus a double-sided one needs to be more for like lots of rapid detail and smaller details, you know. So you're not going to use it for like really high. Um, UX Frank, are you a um, are you a uh, are you are you a Photoshop person at all? And uh, hey, Nocturne Dev, yeah, it's cool. Hey, it's like it's like a pretty uh, it's an, it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty neat. And okay, we get a lot of a lot of variety. So once I mean, so actually, let me just save this brush really quick. Brush preset. And this has only been like this is like two brushes. This is two photos. This is as simple as two little photos. Oh, I'm not gonna right. I forgot I'm not naming them because it tends to be a little bit of a chore. Now they could be that they they might be a bit close together. I have to. I'll probably play with these and tweak them. What are you working now, UX Frank? I don't know what to call you. Do you want me to call you UX Frank or UX Frank? Like I'll I'll try to pronounce you properly but so with this brush too um i also know based on the direction i'm going to go i'm going to get a certain brush right so if i go right i'm going to get more of this so if i start feeling like oh wow, i'm getting a lot of a lot of the ferny thing i know that i'll just pull to the right and i'll get more of the other thing um the only thing that might be a bit of a problem on this thing is that top flower piece is a bit it's possibly a little bit repetitive because it has a very distinct little top on it. Well, thanks, Frank. Okay, so Nocturne Dev is your friend. Well, welcome both of you guys to the stream. I think Nocturne Dev, have you been on here before? I feel like maybe you have or your name's just familiar, uh, similar to someone else's. Yeah, so I'm thinking of fixing this little top piece with a little bulb on it because it's sticking out a lot to me. So what I'm going to do is let's just go back to that brush and I'm going to kill a, I'm going to murder that little bud. But I will duplicate this brush for that first just in case. So let's get in there and we'll just like kill it. I might put like another leaf in there just so it's not like a perfect little Y shape thing. I'm not sure. Let's let's take one of these. I'm just going to press Control J just to duplicate it out. And I'll put that in there. This is called genetic engineering. There. Okay. And now, now that we've got that sort of that new little, that might be equally problematic though because it creates a very specific shape too. So let's also fold this in. N learning what makes a good a good brush tip is a bit of a it's a bit of a process. I still haven't mastered it. Sometimes I think something's going to make an amazing brush and it ends up being garbage. But there's definitely a few little things that will make or break a brush, and that symmetry is one of them. Let's get rid of that a bit. Oops. And I'm going to grab that little piece and modify it one more time. Well, welcome to the stream, Nocturne Dev. Are you, are you a... Um, Photoshop person, or is there anything like what platforms are you using? You're just curious. Come to hang out because you're curious. Okay. I might this leaf here is a little bit wonky. I might just kind of prune it in a little bit. I'm really trying to get rid of things like sta really you um, specific looking standout shapes in some ways, especially near the tops, because that can really break the illusion of um of the of the brush being not unique okay so what i'll do here is i've just i've tweaked this brush obviously so i'll go edit and i will define the brush again and then what I, i'm hoping will work is if i go back into this brush and i go to brush and i go to the 
um, brush tip shape and I change it to this one. I don't know why it does that. Or maybe I just grabbed the wrong one. No, that's that's the right brush tip. It's just like, it's like s made the spacing is just crazy tight. Cool, but it's fixed. So now it's not so defined looking like I can, I feel like I can probably tile that better, pattern that better. Eh. You know what? We might want to just pull the top off that thing because it's still pretty repetitive looking. Oh, you're a programmer now. Okay, what kind of programming do you do? Let's undo stuff because I just I murdered this thing. There we go. Um, I might just actually take this thing here. Let's we'll merge it. I guess we'll merge it. I, I might just del erase. Oops. I might just, I'm going to try one where I erase the top off of these edges. MySpace. What is this MySpace? I used to use MySpace when I was back in the day. Okay, I might just take this. Is MySpace even around anymore? Oh, now you're doing iOS development. Cool. That's fun. Do you enjoy it? I'm not quite sure what to do with this tip. I just I feel like it's it's a little bit easy to read as a tiled thing. I would like to limit that a little bit. But I don't want to um oops. I could always just draw on it too instead of manually manipulating everything pushing it around. I could just draw on it. Let's just bring this one down here and go like that. See if this helps. Oh, it's for music only. Yeah, I remember starting a music account on it at one point, and then I used SoundCloud, and then I promptly forgot my... No, I lost my login. for Not my login. I lost the uh, main account that my... I used to I used to have Dan at everyone dies films dot com and I don't have that anymore and so I can't log into my SoundCloud account anymore. But I don't put I don't write make enough music anymore to use it. Okay, so I've just added a new one. So now we're gonna go back to this our busted brush. This one. Not that one. This one. And we're going to replace the tip with this one. Once again, it's messed our spacing up. Okay, that's better. That's for surely better. It's a little less. It's a little less easy to read as a as a tiled thing. I mean, we could always have both, but I think it's better like that because it's not a bulb and it's not a very specific thing, so a little easier to work with. We don't have to worry so much. So let's see here. Let's go back and forth, back and forth, this way, this way, back and forth, back and forth. Cool. Okay, so I would say that one's done. We'll oh it's already been it's been saved, I believe. Wait a minute, has it been saved? No, it hasn't. Oh, I have to resave it. Let's change the tip to that. Increase the spacing a little bit more. Oh, I don't know. I have to play with this. Usually what I do, what's this hero section, Spunrita? I haven't seen that. I may, or maybe I've seen it, I'm just, for, I'm just not sure. I'm not 100% sure on the reference. Okay, I think I'm gonna save this one like this. So let's save a new one. See you later. So we'll get rid of this one, delete brush, okay. Brush, okay. 
There's a lot of prep. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe I mean UX Frank. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, you guys are talking to each other and I'm just nosing in like a unwanted neighbor. Cool. I think that looks pretty rad. That looks neat, eh? I mean, you can see a bit of the like the repetition on that plant for sure um, of this guy here. But that's always something you could remedy or, you know, once you have enough of them, you're not going to notice as much. But that's pretty easy to fix, just depending on what you're doing. Cool. So we'll get rid of that. I like that brush. Oh, there. Um, oh, the hero section. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> I thought you meant like hero is and like, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't know the, I, the terminology for the website, the web. The web dev te terminology. Sorry, my bad. Thank you. That's thank you. I thought you were talking to someone with like an actual part of their web page that was called the hero part. I'm an idiot. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Okay, cool. So, so we've actually done a lot with. Um, with these just these two brushes, it's kind of crazy how much we got out of those two things. So we've got a lot of stuff to work with now. Uh, yeah, UX Frank, I, I do all the illustrations currently. Um, or sorry, I should just call you Frank. You asked me to call you Frank. Um, yeah, so currently I do all the illustrations, um, but I'm sure that'll change. I mean, we're always we're kind of in that process of of looking for people all the time. We're just being open to it. So right now we're we're like, yeah. Eventually, eventually I will I will not be the only illustrator. But right now, mostly me. I'm wondering if I I'm just like playing with this brush. I feel like I should have a tilt on it. I should be able to tilt it better. It's aggravating me a little bit. I can't rotate it around. Oh, thanks, thanks, Frank. Uh, yes, I'm one of the owners of the company. I'm one of three of the owners of the company. I'm going to put the tilt on this because I, I kind of want to use the tilt. So I want to be able to do stuff like that. Although it's very, this brush is not as versatile as I would have hoped. I think it needs to be able to get smaller. So let's make the minimum diameter smaller. There we go. That's better. And thanks for the compliments. I'm I'm glad you like the illustration. I'm 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 typically very insecure about my illustration because I'm not um yeah, I'm not super fast and I'm not really I'm not trained properly, so I tend to muddle through things a little bit as Funrita has witnessed on several occasions. But sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works in my favor. Cool. So one of the things I'll probably find is as I get go along with these, I'm, some of these brushes will become less and less useful. Like this one, I'm starting to see it's really not that useful. It's really tile patterny looking. Um, but we'll keep it for now. Get rid of this one. I try to be super hard on my brushes and not get too precious of them if I can help it. So th that one pales in comparison to, I think, this brush, which is a much stronger brush and could always be thinned out for more detail. Cool. All right, so let's, um, I, I'm gonna just do one more brush. I mean, I, I can only do this till one tonight, so um, I can't go as late as I'd like to. So we did that one and that one. Let's have a look at, I want to do one that's more grassy, I think. Let's have a look, what do we have here? That one's a pretty good one, which I'll get. That This one has a lot of plants in it, actually. This one could be cool for like a ground cover one. Maybe we'll, let's try this one and see what we get out of it. There's like a nice big piece of garbage in there too. So let's take this one, pull it over here. Drop it in here, bonk. It's ginormous. Did 
Did my son have a favorite photo? Uh, yeah, the one where he was, there was one photo where he was gnawing on the board. <laughs> that was his favorite photo. And then he asked to take a few photos and I let him begrudgingly because at th that point I was starting to get like mildly annoyed because he was, I mean, he's like, he's only five. So, I mean, you can't expect a lot out of a five-year-old. I'm surprised he had the patience that he that he did me like dragging him every five minutes and be like, Ooh, here's a good photo. Oh, here's another good photo. I think after a while he was just like really bored. Um, but he lasted pretty well. Anyways, there was one picture where he was chewing on the board and he thought it was hilarious because his whole, he was, he was gnawing on it. Like it was a piece of meat. All right. I'm going to cut this one out. We'll probably have to do a bit of fixing on this one. Because, mm, well, the piece of garbage is one thing. I wonder if we could probably use the content to wear fill on it or something. I'll probably grab, I'll probably paint in some grass pieces or something. We'll see. I might not have to. But I need to get it to terminate like a little island for sure. So first, I'm going to cut, cut the structure down a bit. <laughs> yeah, they could make a great texture. When he was little, I mean, this isn't like a super great story or anything, but when, when he was really little, he bit a little kid so hard they had teeth marks, and the parents called me. And they were really upset and they were like they were really mad at mad at us which is totally fine but the thing is is like as a parent um i really like i at a daycare it's not really there's only so much i can do to stop my kid from biting another kid it's kind of the job of the of the caretaker to really anyways they weren't watching him properly and he bit this little kid and left, left teeth mark teeth marks and I thought it was, I mean, it was terrible. But anyways, your, your thing is reminding me of it. It's kind of funny in retrospect. And he, <laughs> one of the kids he bit, because he used to bite all the time. Kids are the worst. But one of the kids he was gnawing on, they ended up becoming really good friends. They're still friends to this day. Okay, so I'm just using, oh, I was using the stamp brush. But the stamp brush is fine. I'm going to try the healing brush. This should should be fine. I just want to get rid of some of this. We're not going to see a lot of this detail. I'm just doing this because once we push the values around, it should be barely noticeable anyway. But I'm just clearing this out. And then on top of that, I want to grab just I'm going to grab a really I have one brush I call um, to my tools. It's just like a really hard. Mm, I get it's soft. It's not soft round. It's a hard brush. It's like a um, rough drawing brush. That's one of them. And I can use this if I put it white. I can use this to draw in some grass if I need to. You know, just to get some like more naturally feeling little shapes or something if I have to, just so it doesn't terminate so weird. Oops. I'm just drawing right on the alpha channel. So this one I'll probably want to double up too, which will which will kind of be cool, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing I think I mean, I don't know, like for anyone who's a parent out there, I I, I forgot all this stuff, but like I mean, I obviously well, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore at the moment. But um, it's it's like you spend so much time fussing about how crazy and and like all the stuff your kids are doing. And you're like they're gonna there's gonna be something wrong with my kid, and they're like you know and yeah that can happen for sure, and it's really terrible when there's something really wrong with your kid. But um, the reality of it is is like most kids stop biting. Most kids aren't biting unless they, there's actually something something wrong with their development, which is completely it happens. But it's pretty rare, and you. I remember as a 
when especially when he was young, just fussing about everything. And maybe you don't get over that. Oh, thanks for hosting me, UX Frank. That's awesome. Or Frank, that's great. Thank you. Um, Spunrita, do you how many kids do you have again? I can't recall. Did you say you have do you have three kids? Okay, so I'm just adding a couple of these. I think I need to find, I don't know where my actual, like, my good, my nice and solid um, brush what is. Oh, here it is. It's called Good Round Dynamic, right? So this one's really good for hard edge stuff that I sometimes do. Like, if you need hard edge stuff with good detail and it's, like, just grasses and stuff, that one can be really good. Oh, you have four kids, you poor soul. Oh my goodness. I'm just joking. I come from a four child family too. Well, I come from it. I'm not I didn't make a four child family. I don't even I don't think I could handle it. It's I have so much respect for people who, who are good at raising children. I'm good at raising future criminals. Oh, hey, Swifty. They were made on purpose? Oh, my goodness. You hate happiness. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to merge this together because I think we're pretty good. And then I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. So I think I'm going to double this up with another grass one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, and I'll desaturate. And then I'm going to bring the levels down, I think, because I, again, pretty sure this is going to be used mostly as an alpha brush. So I'll push these down quite a bit, crush those blacks. And I don't mind a tiny bit of nuance in there. There we go. And let's get one more um, grass brush that we can pair up with this thing. So let's go see if we can find another cutout section. I've just got so many. That's another good one. I could probably actually, let's grab this one. Sorry for the sniffing guys. It's like, it's gotten cold here. So now my I'm, I'm entering that time of the season where I will constantly, almost constantly have a running nose. So I'm going to, I'm going to sound like a Coke addict everywhere I go. I'm not even cool enough to have a coke problem. Not that having a coke problem is cool, but I always imagine it in the movies that that you know those big salesmen and hot shots have coke problems. Not dorky animators that <laughs> doing Twitch streams. Holy, you got twin sisters that are 16 years younger than you? Are they from the same parents? I have a brother that's that they call that where I'm from they call that Irish cousins. I think Irish cousins. When when you're when you're when you're less than a year apart. Wow, that's amazing. Your mom's a trooper. Were they in were they on purpose or was it by accident? Is that too personal? I don't know. Is that question too personal? I'm sorry, you don't have to, obviously you do not have to answer any of these questions. Um, okay, so I'm going to, maybe I'm going to try to find a little more grass. And one more grass piece that I can use. I know I, I went on a bit of a kick to grab little grasses and stuff, so possibly could use this one. Hey, Swifty, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Uh, I guess I'm apologizing to everyone for missing the last few streams. Super bummed about it, but here we're back. Back in action. I really don't, at this moment, for this, um, I don't really care 
about things matching up super well, like the colors and stuff. It's mostly I'm trying to get some really cool shapes. And usually I hand paint all this stuff. So this is kind of, it's a bit weird for me to be doing it this way. No, like normally I don't really quite work this way, but it's also kind of fun to get away from it taking so long to get something to come together. It's been a long time since I've just done like straight up photo manipulation. So it's kind of cool. I think it's like, it's definitely speeds the process up in some ways. So it's not so difficult to make something happen. So I'm going to keep my, I'm going to do the black thing again with my black brush and just paint out some little grass shapes. Because these will all be black in the end anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, Swifty. Um, I'm doing. I'm. I'm basically working on the backgrounds. I'm just. I'm just incorporating some of. I'm kind of prepping. I'm prepping for for lots of things. I'm prepping for. The Harry Hill movie, which we've started. I have the animaticus finalized, and it's all done, and we're now like doing the production schedule for that, and I'm also. I'm just trying to get. Um, stuff done for the walkie-talkie character. So that's. That's this. So we're we're I'm literally this is going to be my pieces to all my stuff to do all my backgrounds. Uh oh, I've lost my English again. Let's keep switching to French. Okay, and for this part, I think I might just I could just grab actually I could just move this over again. We'll just duplicate that. I know this looks this is all pretty messy looking. I'm just going to duplicate this over and maybe that, that hill gets awfully high, that little patch. I might bring that down a little bit. There, we'll just do this. And delete this off. Right around here. This should be fine. Okay, there. And then this little patch here. I just want to pull this down a bit. I'll just go like that. Cool. Oh, you're a twin spun Rita. Oh, did you mention that before? You possibly have. Oh, I'm only partially following the conversation, guys, so I'm not um I'm a little I'm a, I'm a little bit missing what you guys are talking about, but okay. Really quickly now, I'm going to desaturate this, control shift U and then control M, and then I'm going to drop the values right down. Or I guess I could go this way a bit. Oh, no, the other way. Crush things down a bit. And I'll probably come in with the eraser. Since this one seems to have a lot more... Um, I might even bring this more like that. I can see a few little problem spots already. Okay, in general, we're okay. I'm, gonna, I'm going to come in with a, my brush here and just kill off a couple of these spots here. I don't mind some of them. I just don't want to have too many of them. It is a bit of a, it is meant to be an alpha brush and not so much a, a texturing fill brush. I'll make some grassy texturing fill brushes. Um, but that's not, that's not what we're doing right now. And this is looking a little bit squarish. So I'm going to just put in a couple little blades to kill that square feeling there. You see, like once you're in silhouette mode, it's pretty easy to add little extras wherever you need them. Like here, for instance. I'm kind of just looking at the patterns that are emerging naturally and just repainting a few of them in by hand. Cool. Well, let's fix this here. It's got a bit of... Okay, oh, it's a bit too square feeling. Great, should be fine. All right, so this will be an interesting brush. This will be tricky though, because it won't curve well. So if I want it to curve well, if I want to be able to paint like curvy shapes, I need to give this more of an arch, which I might have to do, which I can probably, 
I could probably manipulate it to do that, and I could probably use it in my own grass brushes to do that as well. Let's just see what happens. It pro it like like I said, it's not going to curve well. Like it, this will work on straight surfaces, which is possibly a bit of a problem. Um, one thing we could do with it though is we have this part and this part. We could possibly curve the middle by going like this and like this, and just curving it slightly. So let's, let's keep it so it's a bit more uniform like that. And let's do this one too. Well, actually, before we do that, let's duplicate both of them. We'll group them together, duplicate them, flatten this, get rid of that. There we go. And let's try this one more time. I'm just going to use this. Oh, thanks, Spunrita. That's really sweet of you to say. Spunrita's like just helps keeps keeps the encouragement rolling. takes the tedium out of animation. Is it was it even possible? It is, believe it or not. Okay, so if I anyways, the point of this is if I curve it, um it should it should be easier to work with. So let me just I'm gonna get this uh Ava texture brush again. Because I'm a little worried I'm gonna get murder all the detail. But, but I don't know. It might be okay. I might not have had to curve it. I just feel like I'm probably going to find the brush is not really that useful when it's super flat. But this still might not be enough. Like we're still, it's still pretty flat, even though we've curled curved it a lot. But we'll see. Sorry for sniffing, guys. Nobody wants to hear that. Now this is pretty hard edged. It doesn't have to be this hard edged. We could do a lot with this. We could texture it up and do other things with it too. Um, for now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Oh, um, Frank, we're in Canada. And in Canada, Canada's got, I don't know how I'm familiar with Canada, but it has the similar kind of thing as Mexico, or as Spanish, sorry, in the United States. So the official second language of Canada is French. So we tend to have a lot of French on things. All right, this should work okay. It may be a bit weird with this like little plant thing here. We'll see. So we're gonna do our first try at this brush. Let's go define brush preset. So this is a pretty ambitious brush. It's kind of giant. Let's go to set one. We might have to round up the edges and stuff. I don't know. We have no idea how this is gonna look. Where, uh, Frank, where are you again? Okay, so let's just do our settings. We want to increase our spacing. That's the first spot. Um, next thing, I mean, we could do a flip. We could do a random flipping. Let's not flip. Oh, I see. I did it the wrong place. So shape dynamics, we could do a flip Y if we just wanted to... Although it's not going to line up right because it's not symmetrical, so let's not do that. I'm going to do a flip X for sure. And what we'll do is the same thing we did before is direction. Oh, you're in Arizona. Okay. That doesn't work so bad. It's definitely you're always going to run into risk. Like if you do a tight curve, it's going to look like box planet. <laughs> It's a bit hard to control because it's so big. But I do foresee more using this as, so let's say if we had this color, that you would use it more like this. I'm getting a bit of side, like this brush is a little unwieldy. However, it's kind of sweet in its own way. Once you got the hang of it, it'd probably be okay. Especially for painting like big straight sections, even slight hills. So if we look at full resolution, it's pretty cool. It's, we're not, I'm not spotting the patterns too quickly. Whoa. Kind of awesome. 
And then we go in with our with our grass brush and sort of fix it up for sure. Oh, come on, thing. Got to get the hang of this brush. Cool. That's pretty neat. So ideally, you would have probably rounded off a little bit, but I still don't mind that. I think it's pretty. It's still a pretty good brush. It's a bit, like I said, it's a bit to manage. It's a bit unwieldy. That's big chunk at the bottom. Also, I could thin it out a little bit so it's not so intense. We, I think like it's still a little bit too unwieldy. Let's have a look. What do we got here? Maybe what we do is kind of kill it off on the sides. Yeah, Swifty, I fixed my computer problems. Finally, all fixed. It was a small, a mini small nightmare, but it's all taken care of. You know, like, there's obviously bigger problems in the world than computer problems but they're all fixed. So I'm just going to cut in on this and build like a little, mm, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I feel like it's a, it's just a bit hard to manage this brush at the moment. But that's not going to help. That's just going to make it worse. Hmm. What do we do? Or do we just embrace it? I don't know. I don't know. I definitely let's try to work with it on the set and not try to do anything too crazy with it. So let's say I wanted to add some trees and stuff and some grass. And put some there. Like let's say I was gonna level this out a bit. There and there. Yeah, that's a problem. Sometimes it flips, which isn't cool. Like that's not cool. And maybe I have too much grass. Maybe I need to make it thinner. Because it's creating these like giant pieces that just stick up. So let's just see how it's behaving by itself. Yeah, it can get a little bit hard to manage. Yeah, it's crazy the emotional impact that um, a bunky, a buggy computer has like can have on us but you know i was saying the other day i was saying to to emily or someone i, I was just talking about computer problems and yeah it's kind of silly but one of the i think the thing that that for a lot of us i could be wrong i'm just i'm purely speculating but one of my thoughts was that um computer problems um they're abstract you know like w when you're when you're let's say you're a traditional painter um, a computer problem, or sorry, a brush problem is, um, it's relatively easy to figure out. You know, if you're having a problem with a physical object that you use to work with, it's a lot easier to understand that problem and fix it than when you're dealing with technology where everything is a little bit, it's a little bit abstract and it can be a bit difficult to wrap your head around. So... There is a sense of like I, I think we we can have a tendency too to start to feel like there's something there's something even greater than the problem itself at hand if that makes any sense at all. Because sometimes it's really hard to understand like why it's happening because none of it makes any sense. You know, I I, I think that's the toughest thing about it is it. You know, if your brush bristles are falling out, you're like, well, I, the glue's bad, and and this isn't, you know, or maybe I push too hard. But with technology, there's no real rhyme or reason sometimes, and that can be very disorientating. I'm just adding an extra top to this thing because I feel like the brush will operate better if it's more symmetrical. Because right now, if I go one way, the grass is at one level, and if I go the other way, the grass bumps up a little bit because the brush isn't symmetrical, isn't equal in the height. On both sides. So I'm going to try to just um, define this brush. I feel like this will be a pretty sweet brush. I've never had a really good grass mix brush before. Oh no, I lost all my cool work I was doing. Well, it wasn't that cool anyway. 
Who cares? It wasn't cool, dude. It just was. Okay, let's do size jitter a bit. Size jitter. Angle jitter. No angle jitter. Roundness jitter for sure. I agree with you, Swifty, on that one. It is, I agree. It's first world problems, but problems are indeed relative. There was an interesting study on that. I can't, I'm not going to quote it because I'm not 100% sure of the actual information. But there was an interesting study about the amount of stress that certain problems cause us. And it's, it's somewhat, um, it's somewhat like, uh, yeah, like calling, calling things, you know, it's good to have perspective, but it's also important not to oversimplify um, problems and diminish, diminish them. You know, like I, I know it's like it's really important to have perspective, but anyways, I don't want to get too much into that. But anyways, it's cool. Um, not cool. What am I doing? I'm saying the brush is kind of cool. There's a little bit. I'm finding it. It is a bit repetitive. There's some things that stand out to me, like this joining of the two leaves here. This one and this one is like really a clear pattern. So let's fix that. These brushes are a little tad on the tedious side. I know. So I'm going to take this, let's merge this down. I'm going to take this piece off here. And I'm going to rotate that up. Because it's kind of creating a weird, it's like creating a, a shape that is very easy to identify. And I'll probably have to delete Yeah, losing work is the worst. It's the worst. Well, I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> My God. I feel like once you start talking about first world problems, it makes you, like, I don't feel like I can say anything because obviously losing work is not the worst thing that can happen to you. But it's definitely the worst in this world, this business. It's the worst, it's the worst little problem to have in this work, this world. It can be such a stressor talking in circles now because I can't feel like we say anything because we've you lost a ton of work oh my god where when was that that's horrible that's sickening I hate it when that oh that makes me sick when that happens Okay, I might kill this little bit right, this piece right here. Hmm. Maybe this one too, that. And then come up in here and get rid of that. Just trying to kill off a bit of the super recognizable pattern. This leaf is a big offender in some ways because it's such a obvious and clear shape. Let's see if I can move it. Oops. Control shift A. J does that. So maybe put it there. I might make it a bit smaller. I really want to be careful. This one is naturally quite symmetrical. It's weird how things in real life, you know, you forgive them for their symmetry because they're real. But if I had painted this, I'd be like, oh, that looks too patterny. We'll try that. IMAX can be really great. Oh, Swifty, I'm glad it was a long time ago because that means you probably recovered a little bit. Oh, Spun Rita, you're not, <laughs> you're not diminishing the problems. It's very important to be aware that our problems are rel are kind of, you know, they're the problems of luxury in some ways. You're not diminishing. It's just it, I, as soon as I as soon as I start thinking that way, I'm like I don't even have real problems. In real life, I don't have real problems. I have like luxurious problems.
That's awesome. Yeah. Those computers can be really great, and they're beautiful. Man, those are beautiful computers. Okay, so I think we fixed this brush. Let's have a look. So I'll finish this brush up, and then I'm going to bail out. So first of all, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Whoa, that looks cool. It looks like a cornfield. Uh, around this jitter. We'll pop that up a lot. That'll, that'll help some of the tiling or the pattern, the obvious patterns. Flip X, that'll help more. You do a lot of your work on the cloud. That's awesome. Um, I find like it, it's a bit hard for, I think, depending on what, biz what business you're in, it's a bit hard. I have a hard time working on the cloud because my files are so huge. I do a little bit. Like I've been using Creative Cloud a lot for even for this stuff. Like I'm just bringing my brushes home all the time and working on things that way, so that's really helpful. Um, just so you guys, just so you know, this brush is working a lot better since I've made it more symmetrical. It's not feeling so unstable. You know, it is super important to have good equipment to work on. I was just talking to a guy actually um, okay, we can use pen pressure on the roundness to really mess stuff up. And be careful. He's been working on an animation that he largely funded by himself. Um, but he has the right, right idea in that he spent a lot of money on good rigs because he knew that a good rig, and a rig not as in a computer, as in a, as a, a stop motion animation rig, he knew that if the animator was had to struggle and fight with the rig, that the w it just would be a terrible experience and end up costing more money because you spend a lot of money fighting. You can spend a lot fighting with technology when you would, you know, it'd be better just to be getting your work done. Okay, so I'm going to put the pen pressure on so that it changes also the size of this thing, but I'm going to be careful with that. I don't want to get too carried away with that. Okay, so so far things are pretty flat. I, I'm, I'm not sure about, um, wait a minute, how's this working? I think we're all doing the same thing every both sides. Okay, right. Um, I could do a flip Y jitter. I'm a little bit, hmm. I want to do the direction thing because then I at least know what I'm getting. I'm just a little worried because it's so, it can be so touchy, but actually that works okay. We're a lot better now that it's symmetrical. There's no reason to force yourself to work on bad hardware. There's no reason. It just makes it just makes life miserable. Okay, I think I have one last thing I want to fix on this brush, and then I th I think we're good. But this is a pretty it's a pretty sweet brush. Like this is this will give you a lot of a lot of terrain. Let's just do something really quick. I'm gonna make a new file. 2,000, oh, not 5,000. We'll go 2,000 by 1,000. Let's go 3,000. I would really love to get an iPad Pro. There's something nice about the portability of them. I have a um, Studio, uh, Cintiq Studio um, Pro, which is really, it's really nice, but it's already, I'm getting some, I'm getting like, I've just had a really horrible technology month. I'm getting, um, I have a blown out pixel on one, on one like that's getting, not pixel, but like an LED that's really over bright or it's not, it's a little bit bright. So I'm going to get have a bit of a bright spot. And then I have these like teeny micro color dots appearing everywhere and it's, and, um, yeah, it's kind of bugging me because I have to, I have to fix it now. It feels like I'm going to have to get it replaced. And of course, I submitted it to Wacom, but I haven't heard back from them at all. I kind of feel like I won't. They're not exactly famous for their customer support. 
Yeah, I'm really bummed about it because I just because I'm gonna have to send it back, and it's I'm using it for everything. I'm using it for my my main Cintiq monitor because it's because we have Eric's working here now. So I, as soon as I have to send this thing back and ship it back, it's it's I don't have a Cintiq. I don't have a monitor to work with, so I'm gonna be back to like old fashioned, you know, just working with no uh, no tablet. No, I don't know if they're good with repair. Honestly, I have I've seen but nothing but angry, frustrated comments. So I couldn't tell you, but it doesn't look good. Okay, so I'm making some I'm making a quick little forest here. Just a silhouette. Just a silhouette forest. I just want to see how it's gonna look. And if we like if we mix it up with other brushes. We'll just use the brushes that we made today and see what kind of cool forest we can make. Just a black and white forest. Obviously, it's not like the greatest thing in the world. But let's grab another brush. Oh, let's, we better save this brush preset. We haven't saved it yet. Okay, let's get rid of this one. You're gone. And you're gone. Okay, so now we have a lot of there's a lot of little brushes we can use. And it's cool because we're going to get some pretty nice little details that are going to help break up some of the repetitive patterns that we're seeing. This is going to be way too busy, but that's okay because we're playing around. I want to hide a bit of that thing because that this is like a repetitive shape I'm seeing a lot, which I could just erase off here. So let's go zero, 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 and we'll go brush, and I'm just going to turn off um, transfer. So let's just erase the top off this one. Oops. This is looking a little bit repetitive. I keep seeing it pop up every now and then. It might be one I fix. Not sure though. It's generally it's okay. And let's grab one of these guys. I'm gonna select the colors that I want. Let's see. Let's go back to full screen again. So let's make this uh, tree back here, our third level. Oh, that's the worst. Mm -hmm. It's the worst that you had that. But it's amazing that they fixed it right away. That is what's great about Apple on that stuff because you just take it in and you, you know they'll give you a new one. But for uh, Wacom, you're, that has to I have to send it back and it has to be and that's the same thing. Like I just ordered a monitor, uh, well not just I ordered a monitor, a 4K monitor from B and H Photo, and they're usually really good. But they sent me a package that had been opened before, which I was like, okay, well that's all right. I'm sure it's fine, um, but then I put, put plugged the monitor in, and it seemed okay at first. There was a little crack in it in the corner, but for the hassle of shipping it back and stuff, I was just like, okay, that's fine. I don't mind the little crack. And then the whole thing, after 30 or 40 days, it got this crazy like black band through the bottom. And then, you know, like, and it's just been getting worse and worse, and I, I'm not even sure at this point if I can send it back. Of course, I'm hoping I can, but I'm not sure if it's possible. Yeah, this does look like something from Vietnam. I was in Nam. Not really. No, I'm just joking. Not a good joke. Okay, and then I have, what else do I have? Well, we did all those trees. So we experimented a little bit. Could just, could like fill up the corner here. This, this big old brambly mess. This would look cool animated, you know, with this much depth. Yeah, and the the I, I I made it even worse because then we it was broken. So then I ordered another monitor that I thought was 4K from Amazon, and stupidly somehow I ordered a a, a normal HD monitor instead. So <laughs> I can't I can't win. I'm in the worst, and, and you know obviously uh, like. I can only be frustrated at myself because 
I'm the dummy who, who didn't order it properly. But sending stuff back is such a pain. Like getting all the box put together, back together, the shipping information all back, like organized, it's it be a real hassle. Anyways, this forest is way too dense and it's kind of, yeah, that was a great movie. That was a hilarious movie. Okay, so now we can just grab some of our, just go back here and we'll do like uh, some cloud brushes. Yeah, I buy so few things now off of from actual stores. I think that's a. I guess that's one of the really good points or things that, that to be supportive of of brick and mortar stores is just being able to take things back. No, it's not cool. They send a crack thing. I agree. That's really weird that they would just. I was shocked by that. I've never had a problem with B and H photo before, but. That was definitely one thing that was not the coolest thing. So these cloud brushes I'm using right now, these are Aaron Blay brushes. Well, I'm glad to hear. Yeah, I feel like I'm feel like I'm gonna have a better chance with Amazon. I mean, in defense of B and H Photo, I haven't sent it even sent it back yet. I'm just frustrated because it's a big shipping tab and it's expensive to get stuff from B and H Photo. It's not more expensive. You get better quality stuff than you get from Amazon and B and H Photo. It's just it has to come from New York or the states, and so you have to pay an import duty and stuff. So it can get pretty expensive very quickly. Just shipping stuff back and forth, and Amazon's okay because again, you're like you're dealing with Canadian, at least for me. You can your Canadian dollars. You're you're sort of, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. You don't have to do the whole states thing and then pay for major like crazy shipping. All right, so last thing, I'm gonna just put one more layer back here. We're just getting a little carried away, obviously. Cool, and now we can put fog in between them. This is how I would probably do like a, a composite. Put in some sweet ground fog. Yeah, it's cool what you can do with these just these few little brushes. So this is very silhouette. -y. Obviously, we've used like I, I think this is kind of what's fun about this approach is there's really very little actually pa actual painting technique required here. Like I haven't done any colors or anything. I haven't done any textures. I'm literally just using the silhouette powers of the brush to do what I want. Yeah, Aaron Blaze brushes are, um, they're killing it. His cloud brushes are really awesome. And he's got some great tutorials. Did you know, I don't know if you guys knew, but you probably already know, but Aaron Blaze did all the, he did the, oh, uh, what is it? The tiger in, um, in Aladdin. No, I've never heard of PH Learn, Flern, or Aaron Nace. I haven't. I, I like, I feel like page learn sounds familiar, but I probably no, I, I have not. But I'm always open to learning new things. Okay, so let's just put a little bit of this in. Could you do you want to throw a link up, Frank? So usually when I'm when I'm actually compositing in real life, I tend to use fog as a way to to um, 
help me compose a scene so it doesn't look so, so busy. There's definitely some areas of busyness that are problematic in this scene, like this stuff all here. Right now, it's probably, it's definitely overkill. Um, and that's a nice, I mean, it's nice because you can always, oh, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, no, I've got to check that out. So it's like Photoshop learning. That sounds great. Um, okay, so I'm almost done. I'm just like playing with stuff right now. So this, like usually when I composite too, I would probably do stuff like move things around because I feel like overall, obviously it's really busy. It's super busy. There's a lot of stuff going on, which could be really cool depending on what the shot was in the film. But right now as a piece of artwork, it's quite busy. Uh, busy isn't bad, but it is, it is if it adds a lot of chaos, if there's a lack of unity, right? So usually what you'd want to do is you kind of want to squint at it and see if it needs more areas to, to clump things together or to bring values together a little more, if that makes sense. So, you know, you can kill, you, you want to just create areas of focus. And if you feel like, I mean, if everything's really quite disparate and different and there's a lot of contrast, that can make things... Um, that can make things just like like uh, feel a little more cohesive or focused. So as we reduce contrast, like I'm not doing a good job here, but as I push this area more into the grays or so they, that they have a similar value, like there's less contrast, your eye will be less focused. So that, that area becomes less heavy and your eye searches for the next place of contrast. Um, so areas of contrast are areas of interest typically, like higher contrast t typically draws our eye. Um, and then if you just have a lot of contrast everywhere, you you may find that it actually is, it can be very, very, very distracting. So if we turn off this fog, and you'll see it as, as you work through a piece, like you can see like there was something very unified about this but then as we added more and more fog, what started happening is we started, like it was cool in some ways, but it also started creating more contrast down in these lower areas, which in some ways have a has added chaos. So if I get rid of them a little bit, it starts to make it a little less crazy. But this is the, you know, even this one here. So maybe this one here could come in front. But it's really um, this is why like this is why I like working digitally because something like this if you were painting it manually you would have to uh, um, re you'd have to re repaint it. Um, okay, so the last thing the last thing we'll do really quickly one other way to reduce busyness is by and I I learned this on the Aaron Blaze channel. Um, thanks for the thanks for the link, Frank. If I go to the tool presets, I can do a painterly blend. I have this like little painterly blend, which I've shown people before. But sometimes I use this to kill off areas that might be causing too much distraction. So let's say we have one of these foreground areas. Maybe it feels like really too busy. I'll shrink this thing down. And I can start scrubbing away some of the detail here. And it, it can sometimes help to make it look a little more painterly. Um, I don't always recommend it. It's definitely better in areas of lower contrast. So like down here, for instance, we have less contrast. So if I go in here and start scrumbling it out, you'll see that it starts to create a bit more unity. It feels like there's less of a layer there. So I'd like soften that out. And that can be that can be really good, right? It creates it helps reduce some of the madness of this area. And this kind of this kind of approach, this thinking is going to just help. Like you see all this mess in here. Like this is quite a rat's nest of um, of detail and information, visual information. So we can just have a look and see where a lot of that's coming from. It's this layer right here. It's the biggest offender. This is a little trickier to do, especially if you're if you're if you're doing a motion, a lot of motion. But I'm going to kill some of this off, and this will help bring some more clarity to the foreground objects. Now, if, if this layer was panning, for instance, though, you're not going to be able to do that the same way because like in animation with the parallax effect, you're going to need a lot of trans transition 
or, or movement along there. So one of the ways to solve this is either bring up its value, bring up the layer's value a little bit so it's not so, so we allow that, that layer there to have more dominance so it doesn't create as much noise anymore. That can really help. Like value is, is really its key. So you see as I push this value up or down, it changes the overall feeling of this scene. And it can either add more chaos or less. So if I bring it to that, it's really reduced the amount of visual noise. And we just have to find the right mix depending on what we're trying to say in the image or what we want the feeling to be. And if you have, like, for instance, an image like this, if you have a lot of difference between, let's say, this layer and then one back there, you might assume there's water in between or something like that. Um, what tool are, um, are you asking, Swifty, are you asking me? I'm not really sure what you're referring to. Oh, um, the smudge tool, possibly. Oh, the Hearthstone trailer is amazing. I love the Hearthstone trailer. That's beautiful. You know what? The, uh, there's another game that has a really good trailer, too, and I, I'm trying to remember. It's a similar kind of board game-ish idea. It's actually really cool, the trailer. I'm going to try to remember it, but it's slipping my head right now. I might brighten this one up a little bit. I'm going to have to check this one up above the stream because sometimes we post the streams onto YouTube and I don't want to get a copyright strike. If you send your own work, I'm, I will happily play it on the stream, but other people's like professional businesses like these guys, I won't. Whoa, this is crazy. That's a lot of work. Some nice depth there and really nice transitions. Wow. They did a good job of positioning those shapes and everything. Okay, so I'm going to bring that up one more. I'm just going to do one last thing, We're gonna, then i got to get out of here. Once again, I've way blown past my intended schedule. So right, right here, I'm just using the lightness and darkness to push this around a little bit. Now, the other thing you can do is then once you've done all this, you can come in with your brush and start painting on them, obviously. But it's kind of cool. I think it, it works pretty well. It's a bit busy, but, but again, that's just stuff that you can, all you have to do is work on it a little bit. Cool, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Frank. But cool, so this is a scene that uh, it's kind of nice because we made everything except the clouds tonight. Um, all these little pieces are pulled directly from photos and we can now, those are rushes. So those are great. Um, those, are, those are great little rushes. Frank, it's actually not impossible to learn that stuff. It's a lot of, like, there's a lot of anatomy and stuff to know about trying to do those kinds of character illustrations. So um, if I were to recommend anything, like, and I'm not that you're asking, but I would definitely focus on your, like, digital painting is one thing, um, and there's, there's a lot of courses for that, but also knowing your anatomy and structure is super important for that kind of drawing and painting, and you can always, um, the painting part when it comes to the anatomy is, easy in some ways it's easy because the anatomy at least for me it depends on how your brain works my brain i have a, a little bit worse structural memory so i don't necessarily retain um, anatomy super well or the names of things really well i'm gonna add like a bit of brightness here okay i'm gonna stop soon essentially this is actually how i start a lot of paintings is I like to do the alpha chat like this kind of stuff first and then sort of and then find the painting out of it after. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I think I'm going to call it a day, guys. So uh, thanks for hanging out. It's uh, also like um, Frank and your friend. I can't remember your friend's name off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember 
he was, he was a little, your friend was a little more quiet. But anyways, thanks for hanging out, Doctor and Dev. Uh, it's cool to have you two new two new people hanging out, um, and contributing to the chat. It's like I'm glad you're here, and it's really awesome. So uh, I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna take off. But thank you so much, guys, and thanks for your patience. And we'll be back to a more regular schedule right away here. Things are getting back on track. Text fixed. Um, family stuff's getting under control. But I really appreciate you guys hanging out. It's been really fun. So um, have a great night. And um, next stream is on, well, I guess next stream's tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Same, an hour earlier than it was tonight. So I'll be, I'll be here for that one. All right, so peace out. Thank you so much, and it was fun.